Welcome to section 21 of viruses. This is our virus overview figure, and in this video, we'll be discussing rubella, which you can see right here. This scene will take place in ancient Rome with an emperor directing a gladiator fight. You can see the emperor towards the back ringing the red bell as if telling the gladiators to commence the fighting. Anyway, red bell sounds like rubella, which should help you remember that this image is all about rubella. Now we've shown the emperor's trusty dog at his side. As you can see, it's a German shepherd, and we've shown this dog here to help you remember that rubella was previously known as German measles. As was custom among the Romans, notice that the emperor is wearing a toga. This is our symbol for the toga viruses, which should help you remember that rubella is a member of the toga virus family. Before we go any further, also notice that we've made the color schematic warm, which is to help you remember that rubella is an RNA virus. Now we've added a rainbow to the image, which is our recurring symbol for the positive sense viruses. So rubella is a positive sense virus. Next, notice that a line of people is formed in the background in anticipation of this fight. The line should help you remember that rubella has a linear RNA structure. If you look back at the emperor, you can see that the red bell he is using actually has an icosahedral shape. We've made the bell shape this way to help you remember that rubella has an icosahedral shaped capsid. Now we've added some mist to the scene. This is a recurring symbol and is here to help you remember that rubella is transmitted via aerosolized respiratory droplets. All right, now let's move on to discuss the clinical features of rubella. Notice that we've shown one of the gladiators injured on the ground. The big swordsman leaning over him appears to have won this fight. The blood on the victim's face is from his wounds, and the blood is even splattered next to the tree trunk. The little red spots resemble a rash, so they're here to help you remember that rubella causes a maculopapular rash. The fact that the blood came from the victim's face and then splattered over near the tree trunk should help you remember that the rash starts on the face and then spreads to involve the trunk and extremities. So putting these two ideas together should help you remember that rubella causes a maculopapular rash that starts on the face and spreads to the trunk and extremities. This is the maculopapular rash caused by rubella. You can see it quite well on the patient's back. If we return to the image, also notice that the victim's hair is quite curly right behind his ears. We use this symbol in our EBV image, and it represents post-auricular lymphadenopathy. So rubella can cause post-auricular lymphadenopathy. It also causes lymphadenopathy in other locations, such as posterior cervical lymphadenopathy. But post-auricular lymphadenopathy is the most unique and highest yield to keep in mind. Now you can see that we've added another gladiator to the scene. He was injured by the swordsman, as you can see by him hopping on one leg and holding his other leg. So while his friend falls to the ground, he desperately tries to fight back by throwing a rock at the swordsman. Anyway, the fact that he's holding his hurt leg should make you think of arthralgias and help you remember that rubella also causes arthralgias. Okay, now let's move on to discuss congenital rubella. As you can see, we've added a pregnant woman to the scene who is the emperor's wife. She's holding a torch, which is to help you remember that rubella is a torch's infection. We'll show all of the information about congenital rubella near the torch so that you can easily compartmentalize this information in your mind. Notice that now we've added an eye patch on this pregnant woman and some prominent sun rays are reflecting off of it. She wears this patch because her eye was injured by one of these fighters. As retribution, the emperor has made them fight to the death. Anyway, this will represent cataracts because cataracts are like an eye patch in that over time they can obscure vision by blocking out any light that attempts to pass through the cloudy lens. So congenital rubella may cause cataracts. Next, notice that we've added earmuffs on her head. She likes to wear these because it gets quite loud in these arenas. And just like in our other images, the earmuffs should help you remember that congenital rubella may cause deafness. Now we've shown her eating a muffin. And just like in our CMV image, this is here to help you remember that congenital rubella may cause a blueberry muffin rash. This is an image of an infant with a blueberry muffin rash. As you can see, the patient has dark lesions on the skin that resemble the blueberries in a blueberry muffin. These lesions occur due to extra medullary hematopoiesis in the skin. Now we've added a cart next to the pregnant woman. The servants bring any personal items to the queen and emperor on this cart as they enjoy the fight. In any case, cars or carts are symbols for the heart. The fact that this cart has the abbreviation PDA on it and is next to a pregnant woman giving her husband some public display of affection, or PDA, should help you think of a patent ductus arteriosus, or PDA. So congenital rubella may cause a patent ductus arteriosus. Other cardiac defects are possible, such as pulmonary artery stenosis or septal defects, but a PDA is the highest yield to be familiar with. The queen asked for some paint so that she could paint while watching the fight, but we can see that some of it accidentally got spilled on the ground. The paint is yellow, just like a patient's skin with jaundice. So this yellow paint should help you remember that congenital rubella may also cause jaundice. Finally, notice that we've shown a live show sign that's shaped like a syringe. I guess this sign makes sense, considering that this gladiator fight is a live show in a sense. Anyway, this is our symbol for live vaccines, 
and is here to help you remember that there is a live vaccine for rubella. All right, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A newborn male is born at 38 weeks gestation to a 27-year-old unvaccinated woman. He has purple purpuric skin lesions and a continuous murmur best heard over the left infraclavicular area. During the first trimester, the mother had an illness caused by a single-stranded positive sense RNA virus with an envelope. Which of the following clinical features did the mother most likely experience during this time? A. A mononucleosis-like illness. B. Vesicular genital lesions. C. A maculopapular rash. Or D. A painless genital ulcer. From the question stem, we can see that the infant is presenting with purple purpuric skin lesions, which is describing a blueberry muffin rash. He also has a continuous murmur, best heard over the left infraclavicular area, which is describing a patent ductus arteriosus. These two findings are pretty unique to rubella. This is confirmed when we're told that the mother developed an illness during the first trimester, which was caused by a single-stranded, positive-sense RNA virus with an envelope. Therefore, we can be certain that this child's condition was caused by a congenital rubella infection. So with this in mind, the correct answer is C, a maculopapular rash. From the image, recall that the red dots on this guy's face right here, as well as near the tree trunk right here, are here to help you remember that rubella causes a maculopapular rash that starts on the face and spreads to the trunk and extremities. So the mother most likely developed a rash during her first trimester, but may have also developed postauricular lymphadenopathy or arthralgias. A is a reference to CMV, which can also cause a blueberry muffin rash, but this is not an RNA virus, so A is incorrect. B is a reference to HSV, which can cause recurrent infections and chronic diarrhea in a neonate, but not a blueberry muffin rash and a PDA. It's also a DNA virus, not an RNA virus, so B is incorrect. Finally, D is a reference to syphilis, but this is a bacterium, not a virus. It also presents with many congenital abnormalities, but is not associated with a PDA or a blueberry muffin rash, so D is incorrect. So again, the correct answer is C, a maculopapular rash. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about rubella.